No, Good thank one. you. I'm a devil worshiper. You are? Oh, yeah. Well, at least I'm you're... I'm just kidding you. Oh, I was say, well, at least you're honest. <laughs> I'm just kidding you. All right. Are you a Christian? No, I wouldn't. Would you, would you read that for me, though? I no, love I you. No, I will not. Okay. No. I'll just start with garbage. Okay. Hi. Good news for you, my friend. Very good news. There you go, buddy. Thank you so much, sir. You have a beautiful day. Um, if you don't, you know, Scripture is very clear, sir, that if we're not born again, if we don't put our faith and trust in Christ, we will perish in hell. We'll be under the wrath of God for never, where I deserve to go. But if you if He grants you repentance and you put your faith and trust in Christ for salvation, then you'll be with Him and with the Lord in heaven forever. I believe in Him. You do? Yeah. Okay, you just joking with me? Yeah. All right, just testing me to see if I would tell the truth or not? Yeah. Okay. Okay. You gave me one, I just put it in trash. Hi. <laughs> My name is Chaplain Bill Retz with IPOC Ministries. I'm going to be here preaching the message just for about uh, eight minutes, and then I will be leaving because then they'll be open for business. So for those of you that may not appreciate this, don't worry, I'll be leaving pretty soon. 98% of you received the gospel track. If you have any questions, please email me, and I'll answer those questions for you. I do videotape my outreaches, but if we have a private conversation, and if you ask that conversation to be omitted, I will omit that conversation. Ladies and gentlemen, the scripture in this passage, during the Great Awakenings in America, we had what was known as the Puritans. And the Puritans had a nickname, and they were called the Jeremiahs. And the reason why they were called the Jeremiahs sometimes is because they often preached from the book of Jeremiah. And this morning, I'll be preaching from the book of Jeremiah, chapter 4, which in context is talking about the nation of Israel, but it is also applicable to America, to the United States of America. Unfortunately, we live in a time where our country, from the highest levels of legislative jurisprudence have legislated lawlessness and ungodliness against a holy God. No matter who's in the White House, our U.S. Supreme Court has ruled that homosexuality and killing the unborn child and that adultery and fornication as well as other laws are legal according to man's law but God's law says that He will judge people for their sins. And not only will He judge individuals, every individual for their sin, including myself, He will also judge nations as a whole. And here He's talking about Israel, but this is applicable to the United States of America because this country has committed wicked crimes against a holy God. And this is the word of the Lord. Jeremiah chapter 4 says, If you will return, O Israel, says the Lord, return to me. And if you will put away your abominations out of my sight, then you shall not be moved. And you shall swear that the Lord lives in truth, in judgment, and in righteousness. The nations shall bless themselves in Him, and in Him they shall glory. For thus says the Lord to the men of Judah and Jerusalem, Break up your fallow ground, and do not sow among thorns. Circumcise yourselves to the Lord, and take away the foreskins of your hearts. The men of Judah and inhabitants of Jerusalem, lest my fury, lest my fury come forth like fire and burn, so that no one can quench it because of the evil of your doings. Ladies and gentlemen, the Word of God says that God's appointed a man, appointed a time for man to be judged. And when we die, we will have to give an account to God for every thought, every deed, and every sin we've ever committed. We're going to be judged according to God's holy law, as the tracts say, the law of God. Thou shalt not have any gods before me. Thou shalt not bow down before a carven image. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not lie. Thou shalt not commit adultery. And Jesus said in Matthew 5 that if you've ever looked at a person with lust in your heart, you've committed adultery with her or him. My dear friends, the Word of God 
is our tutor. The schoolmaster tells us our sickness, that we've sinned against a holy God, and that the wages of our sin will be death, but the gift of God is eternal life through the Lord Jesus Christ. My dear friends, because God is just, righteous, and holy, the Scripture says that He will not allow sin to go unpunished. We all deserve to be judged and thrown into hell. That's where I deserve to be. I deserve to be in hell and under the wrath of God for eternity. But by the grace of God, on November 14, 1991, He saved a wretch like me. In this passage, it talks about the circumcision of the heart that God, through the doctrine of regeneration, that when God the Father saves a sinner and draws the lost sinner to His Son for the redemptive work of Jesus Christ, when Christ propitiates and expiates their sins, when Jesus Christ declares the lost sinner righteous before the Father, when the Holy Spirit regenerates the heart, that's when the circumcision happens. That's when the person gets saved. That's when the person gets declared righteous before the Father. That's when the person can go to heaven and be with the Lord rather than perish in hell. My dear friends, God sent the remedy for our sin problem. And the solution to our sin problem is this, that God came to us in the form of a man, Jesus Christ, who is fully God and fully man, conceived of the Holy Spirit, born of the virgin birth. Jesus Christ then, 33 years later, went to that cross where He died of a brutal death, where God poured out His wrath and His fury and His punishment against Christ for the sins of those that would be saved by Christ. Where God punished Jesus Christ and His wrath was put upon Him. Where my sins were imputed to Christ and then Christ's righteousness was then imputed over to me as well as the rest of the church those that would repent and believe. My friends, then Christ went to, went, went to the ground where He was buried, and on the third day, He bodily rose from that grave. And then Christ ascended into heaven where He is now equal with the Father, seated at the right hand of the Father, Jesus Christ, where He will intercede on your behalf if you become saved. The Bible says, to Christians only, to Christians only, that if we confess our sins to the Lord Jesus Christ, He is faithful and just to cleanse us from all of our sins and all of our unrighteousness. My dear friends, the Bible says that if we repent and believe that, that if we repent and put our faith and trust in Christ alone for salvation, we will be saved. The Bible says, call upon the Lord Jesus, cry out to Him for salvation, and you will be saved. My friends, it's going to be Independence Day here pretty soon. You know what that means to me? That on November 14, 1991, when the Lord saved me, that was my Independence Day. That's when He, he, he granted me repentance, and He freed me, and He set me free from my sins. When I used to be a slave to my sin, now I'm a bond slave to Christ. And now that independence from my sin, and my independence from my damnation, has now become a dependence upon Christ. That now I'm dependent upon God the Father. That now I'm dependent upon Jesus. Jesus Christ for my salvation. That now I'm dependent upon the Holy Spirit to enable me to repent. That now I'm dependent on the Gospel. Because the Bible says in 2 Thessalonians chapter 1 that if we do not know God and obey the Gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, that the fiery vengeance of the Lord Jesus will be upon us. Oh, my dear neighbor, call upon the name of the Lord Jesus to be saved. Cry out to Him now. The Bible says, today is a day of salvation. Jesus said, I tell you, you must be born again to inherit the kingdom of God. Ladies and gentlemen, if you have any questions, I'll make myself available for you. Or if you have any prayer requests, I will pray for you.